A lot of fun. Okay, <clears throat> the stealth killer. High blood pressure is a simple mineral deficiency. High blood pressure is not genetic in any way, shape, or term, even, uh, form. Even in the black community, it's not genetic. Millions don't manage blood, blood pressure. Well, that's because they're treating symptoms. They're, they're not dealing with the cause. Cause is a mineral deficiency. Salt has nothing to do with high blood pressure. What's the first thing a good farmer or rancher puts out for his livestock in the pasture? A salt block or, or salt lick, right? There's nobody on that pasture telling a cow she's limited to one lick a day, is there? I refuse to believe my human patients are dumber than a cow. Oh, also, if you're biblically orientated, it's kind of fun. God said, go forth and be a salt of the earth, right? I mean, it's in the Bible. And God is forever. Now, doctors say restrict salt, and they live to be 56. I'm going with God. <laughs> Big study. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem here. Low sodium intake could be riskier. That's because sodium is an essential nutrient. You cannot have nerve impulses without sodium. You can't move water around in your body without sodium. You can't make stomach acid without chloride. Chloride and sodium are probably the most common of all the mineral cofactors necessary for enzymes and genes to work. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. Now, while this study was designed to deal with high blood pressure in the black community, because doctors convinced the black community that high blood pressure is genetic in them, this also is true for whites and blacks and yellows and reds and oranges and everybody, right? What they did was go from Loyola University in Chicago and Oxford University in London to uh, Nigeria. They wanted to go up in the mountains of Nigeria and find some tribal guys that had normal blood pressure. They could take their blood samples and they make a vaccine, come back, genetically engineered thing, inject it in a black man, woman, and child, and get rid of their high blood pressure that way. Well, they get out to Nigeria from, from Oxford University and Loyola University, and they find out that only 7% of the people living in the tribal areas of Nigeria have high blood pressure. 93% are normal. That freaked them out. So they go back to London, they go back to Chicago, and they start doing DNA tests looking for gene pools of people whose uh, ancestors had originated from West Africa during the slave trading days in the 1600s, 1700s. They found lots of them. They started just simply screening by doing blood pressure. They found out that the people with the same genetic pool as from West Africa, as the West Africans, 33% uh, high blood pressure. So you know me, it's not genetic because your position on earth doesn't dictate or change how a genetic disease will manifest itself. If you have a genetic disease here, you know, in, in um, Minneapolis, you're going to have it in London, you're going to have it in Cape Town, South Africa, you're going to have it in Auckland, New Zealand, it doesn't matter where you're on earth, the genetic disease can be the same. So when there's a five times difference here between your, where you live, you know it's not genetic. <clears throat> well, they didn't like that. So they gathered up more, more blood samples from Nigeria, more blood samples from all over the world from people who had originated from Nigeria, their ancestors, during the slave trading days. And they got in the geneticists, and they got in the cardiologists, and the blood pressure people, and all this stuff, and they studied for six years. And in 2005, January 2005, they came out with the final results of the study. Remember, doctors want you to believe that it's genetic. This was published in the British Medical Journal, which is their version of the Journal of the American Medical Association, very well respected around the world. And here's what they said, hold on to your hats. High blood pressure in blacks, not genetic. High blood pressure in whites, not genetic. High blood pressure in yellows, not genetic. High blood pressure in reds, not genetic. It's, it's not genetic to anybody. It's a simple mineral deficiency disease. Now, <clears throat> how many of you in this room, particularly the, the black individuals in this room, how many of you had your doctor send you an email in 2005 saying, praise God, we just learned that high blood pressure in blacks, not genetic. You just take the healthy start pack and the ultimate daily tablets, blood pressure goes away in a couple of weeks. Hallelujah! Anybody get that? I've, I speak to black churches all the time. They've, they've never heard of that. You know how many black men have died in the last seven years because they didn't get the information? Over 100,000 from a high blood pressure stroke. Somebody needs to go to jail. Hmm? But they won't because they're a protected monopoly. So how do we deal with this? We tell people ourselves. We, we share this information and get people to do things for themselves. They won't need doctors. And here comes the fun part. In August of 2003, in the Journal of the American Medical Association of all things, JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, in August of 2003, there was a big article in there about an herb that lowers blood pressure. It has flavanols in it. It's called dark chocolate. Not milk chocolate, not Hershey's bars, but dark chocolate. 
has a, a substance in it called flavanols, which lowers blood pressure. Now, it doesn't solve the problem of the mineral deficiency, but it'll act like a plant medicine. Herbs are plant medicines. It'll lower your blood pressure so you don't have a stroke until you, you're taking enough minerals for you to, to eliminate it permanently, right? But I just keep taking it because I like it. My blood pressure, I'm 73 years old. My blood pressure is uh, 121 over uh, uh, 71. Uh, my, blood, my pulse is uh, 43. It does spike when I get angry. It'll spike up to 45 when I get angry. Um, when I was wrestling for the University of Missouri, my wrestling pulse was 38, and the doctors were always freaking out, but I could always outrun them, outwhip them, and all this, that, and the other, right? And in addition, dark chocolate has another substance. It's a fun substance called PEAs, phenylethylamines. How many of you have heard of phenylethylamines? Okay, this is the reason why we give chocolate on Valentine's Day, is the phenylethylamines. Now, the Spanish, they didn't know the name of the chemical, but they knew there was something special about dark chocolate. So in 1523, they took it to Europe and started giving it away on Valentine's Day. It's, the whole purpose of dark chocolate was to seduce the woman with dark chocolate. A, it's, it's PEAs, phenylethylamines, are the love chemical. They're an aphrodisiac, right? It's really great stuff, but it's got to be dark chocolate. So, in that year, 2003, we came out with a product called Cocogevity. And Cocogevity has flavanols in it, will lower your blood pressure, but it's also loaded with PEAs. <laughs> it always works, guys. So, when Valentine's comes up, and it's coming up in a couple of months, don't give chocolates, give Cocogevity and reap the awards. Reap the rewards. <laughs> okay. If you like pieces of chocolate rather than the liquids, I, I like the liquid. I add it to my coffee. We own a coffee company called Java Fit and it made us publicly traded. One of the things we do if you, um, I personally, I don't take anything from the company. Even though I started the company, I don't take anything from it. I give it all back to you guys. You know, if you help other people, the more people you help, the bigger your check gets. This gets good. Okay. Anyway, triple treat chocolate. <laughs> triple treat chocolate. Triple treat chocolate. Why is it called triple treat? Because it lowers blood pressure, it has probiotics in it, which gives you good digestive stuff and gives you the best sex life you've ever had. Triple treat, right? Because it has flavanols in it to lower blood pressure, but it also has PEAs in it, phenylethylamines. All right, you all. Thank you for joining us today. Did we start the show off with a bang or what? Okay, so Dr. Wallach being, uh, is showing you that look, Salt is not the problem. I wanted to grab your attention, right? Because we have so many people in our community, so many people in many communities across America. Salt, be afraid of salt, salt, salt. But salt is not the problem. There are other things that are the problems that we're not focusing on. So today's show, you heard the drums in the beginning. That's to let you know that bring everybody together. That's an announcement all of us need to be shouting from the babies to our elderly because we don't want to produce problems in babies by telling them no salt when you need it for your stomach acid, when you need it for so many cellular functions. But we have to know the right kind of salt and we have to know there are right amounts to use, right? Okay, so but today's show is also going to function um, focus on heart disease. That's right, problems with the heart. So I want to start out talking about high blood pressure because of course it has a lot to do with the heart, right? Okay, so we are focusing on making sure that we understand how all of that's connected together, okay? So let's take a moment and go back to the drums and then I have a CD that I want you to listen to a bit, all right?
This, welcome back, y'all. This is Sister Modupe, Sister du Modupe's raw vegan soul food show. I'm so excited. I can't even talk and pronounce my own name. We're getting ready to do another show where we're going to be, you're here, Dr. Wallach being interviewed in the background. I'm going to cut in and out so that I can make comments during this interview. You're going to learn some really interesting things today about heart disease, okay? About what they call heart disease, one of the number one killers in not only our community, but across America. Okay, so I don't have a ton of time, so we're going to get started so that we can understand and learn how to prevent and reverse this thing, right? All right, let's get started. Hello, my name is Dirk Twine, and I'm speaking with Dr. Joel Wallach, the mineral doctor. Dr. Wallach is one of the foremost authorities on nutrition and its use in the prevention and reversal of diseases. Dr. Wallach and I will discuss the top 10 leading causes of death among African Americans. But before we begin, I would like Dr. Wallach to give us a brief biographical sketch and his philosophy on health and nutrition. Well, thank you, Dirk. It's uh, always good to spend some time with you. And just for your listeners, I think the thing that makes my view different on health is that I'm a veterinarian as well as a physician. And in veterinary medicine, we don't have a health insurance program for animals like we do people. And if we were to use a human health care system for livestock, for instance, it'd be sticker shock for you. Your hamburger would cost you $275 a pound just to pay for the health care. So we learned in the animal industry that we could keep the price of animal products, such as meat and dairy and poultry and eggs, down to where the average person could afford to eat them every day, simply by eliminating health care costs. And that's such a profound statement, I'll repeat it. Simply by eliminating health care costs. And Dirk, we do that in animals with little nutritional formulas, and I'm sure you've seen these little alfalfa pellets for mice and rats and guinea pigs and hamsters and gerbils and rabbits and kibbles and bits for dogs and there's sheep pellets and pig pellets and horse pellets and duck pellets and trout pellets and monkey pellets and chicken pellets. And the reason why they have the animal feeds in these little pelletized farms is so that every mouthful is biochemically perfect. The animal can't sort through and just eat only the sunflowers or the raisins. Every mouthful is going to be scientifically and perfectly biochemically complete. Now, we've been so successful over the last 75 years using this concept, Dirk, even though we spent $100 billion, we've eliminated up to 900 different diseases in animals that still plague people. And as a veterinarian, it always seemed odd to me that we would be able to use this nutritional technology to eliminate these diseases in animals. Nobody was employing them in people. So I went back to school and in 1978 became a physician and began to use these veterinary nutritional formulas in my human patients. And I'm here to tell you that the concept of preventing and curing diseases in animals with nutritional formulas works exactly the same in people. Been doing it since 1978. Have not yet been able to get too many doctors involved. And so starting about 1978, I really began to lecture uh, to the general public, and I really appreciate this opportunity to share this information with your listeners. That is absolutely amazing to me, and uh, I'm on the quest, I guess, that you are also in terms of trying to get this information out to the general public. As I said, we're going to discuss today the uh, top 10 leading causes of death in the African American community. And let's get started with number one, okay. heart disease. Heart disease. Well, everybody has one heart, and that's the problem. You know, you have two kidneys, and liver regenerates very well, and you have two eyes, and, but you only have one heart, and so you have to take very good care of it. And all of the diseases that plague the heart are nutritional deficiency diseases. Again, that's a very profound statement. All of the diseases that plague the heart are actually nutritional deficiency diseases. They're not genetic. Even when a baby is born with a heart defect, that was caused by a nutritional deficiency early in pregnancy when the embryo's heart was forming. And the mother was missing something, maybe zinc or vitamin A or selenium or copper. And uh, these are very important micronutrients for the heart as it's forming all through the development of the embryo and so when a baby is born with a heart defect it's because the mother was missing something during pregnancy now if the baby's born with a perfect heart and they don't get all the nutrients they need from birth it doesn't take long for that heart to start breaking down and it's really tragic to have a baby who's born normal 
and then feed them on nothing but apple juice and oatmeal. We're only feeding the babies, even if they're born with a perfect heart, and we're only feeding them apple juice, which has hardly any nutrition at all and lots of sugar, and something like oatmeal, which you might think is this great nutritious food, it's okay in some ways, but there's some issues even with oatmeal, then you're not giving that child enough nutrition to develop a heart and a brain and long, strong bones and et cetera, et cetera. And then you can also understand that if we're not eating the right thing as adults or as young people, again, our bodies are, will not develop properly and we will eventually start having issues with organs like having some heart disease issues. He's going to explain more in detail. Let's keep listening. And wonder why by the time they're six years old they have heart problems, and heart murmurs and heart defects and so forth. And once you get to be a teenager, a young adult, and you're participating in athletics, and you're sweating out nutrients and not replacing them by supplementation, it's very, very simple to wind up uh, with a sudden death situation, as uh, very frequently happens in athletes. Then when you get into the middle age, if you're not supplementing properly and you're eating typically, as the African Americans do in the southeastern one-third of the United States, we're eating a lot of fried foods with free radicals that damage the lining of the arteries. You wind up getting atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, you get those coronary artery blockages. And it's very, very simple to wind up uh, with a heart attack, even though you begin... Okay, now you heard him mention the phrase free radicals, okay? So we've heard a lot of this in the news about brown nutrition and such and, and health and disease and illness. Free radicals, antioxidants, all of that. Let me say that free radicals, without having to get into all the biochemistry, and he'll speak a little bit more about this, but free radicals are kind of like um, these uh, destructive, it's kind of like having a shotgun going off inside your body. All this buckshots flying all over, causing all kinds of damage, right? Because we're like a, a factory. We're manufacturing good things, but if we put foods and such that are not good for us in our body, then we create these things called free radicals. And if we put food that already is no good into the body totally, like rancid oils, fried oils, you know, that oil that's been used over and over and over, it starts to cause destruction in the body. So essentially that's what free radicals are chemically. And antioxidants are kind of like the heroes. They come and they kind of absorb and deactivate free radicals. So things like dark greens, the, the chemicals, the phytochemicals and dark greens and things like fruits and, and other vegetables and, and good nutrients like that and good EFAs, good essential fatty acids. Those are things that help to build the body. Other things that aren't building the body, they cause in the body to get clogged and deteriorate the body. So let's keep listening. Did you hear even young athletes who you think are on top of the game, but you hear about it, you don't hear about all of them, but you hear about it, young person running across the field and all of a sudden they fall over dead? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's keep listening. And with a normal heart, it has nothing to do with cholesterol. It has to do with free radical damage to the lining of the arteries of the heart and the brain and the larger arteries of the chest and uh, belly cavity. And if you don't protect yourself with antioxidants and all the known essential nutrients that are required by the heart, you can wind up dead even though you're doing everything else right. You might be exercising and think you're eating right, but if you're not supplementing properly, you can wind up with all kinds of heart problems. For instance, stroke. Cardiovascular problem is listed as part of that cardiovascular disease. Actually, cardiovascular disease may be 25 different diseases, but stroke is certainly listed as one of the top ones, can disable you or kill you, and is very prevalent in the African-American community. A blood clot or thrombosis. Now you know that is so true. It is no joke. I mean, I'm going down the street. I see people who are younger than I am, sturdy men, and they're limping. They're dragging one side of the body and such. They've had strokes. You meet somebody you've known for years and, and they're slurring their words. Some people have mild strokes. Some people have strokes where they're paralyzed on one side of the body for the rest of their lives. And all of this is preventable. You say preventable? Yes, I said preventable. And it is not that we are genetically inclined to any of this. Do you hear me? But if you don't feed the body properly, it's like having a brand new car. If you don't change that oil like you're supposed to do on schedule, 
you don't make sure that the right fluids and the right kind of fluids are in that car, you can forget about getting the maximum amount of mileage out of that car or not having it in the repair shop all the time, right? Well, that's like our bodies. We've got to give it the right nutrients in the right form, plant-based. We've got to make sure that we have the right quantities, and there's something called ratios. We've got to make sure that we have the right cofactors. For example, you hear about calcium all the time. Calcium's kind of like gasoline in your car. You have to have a lot of it in there all the time because it just the body uses so much the calcium, not just for bones and teeth, which are extended bones, but also for cellular functions in the cells. Each of those trillion, trillion, trillion cells in the body also use, func uh, use a lot of calcium. So we, but calcium doesn't work by itself. You can have a great gasoline in your car, but if you've got no transmission fluid in there, you can forget it, right? So if calcium needs um, vitamin D, it needs magnesium, and lots of other cofactors for it to function properly and be, do all those essential functions in the body. So we're chemistry, we're biochemistry, we're mathematics, we're physics, we're all those wonderful things. And it's all on automatic pilot, if indeed we make sure that we give the body the right nutrients. That's why Dr. Wallach in the beginning was talking about how they do this animal pellets for the rabbits, the dogs, the cats, all that. Do you ever wonder why they say feed your dog all those little uh, uh, granular pellets all the time because all the nutrition's in every bite. But we get to choose, well, I feel like a taco today. I feel like pizza tomorrow. I'm going to have me some hot wings. Do those sound like foods that will nourish the body to make sure that this fine, wonderful machine will function well for you to have a life full of vitality and longevity? I don't think so. Let's keep listening. This type of stroke is actually caused by an omega-3 essential fatty acid deficiency. If you don't have enough omega-3s in your diet, and it should be about 3% of your total calories, if you have a ratio problem between the omega-3s and 6s, and you should have three times as many omega-3s as you have omega-6s in your diet, you need to expect a thrombosis or a blood clot type of stroke. You can also get a coronary thrombosis or a blood clot in a coronary artery, which can cause a disabling or life-threatening heart attack can wind up with a deep vein thrombosis in the legs, pulmonary embolism, which are blood clots in the pulmonary veins, all of which are life-threatening. And simply by supplementing with the proper amount of the omega-3 essential fatty acids, you can avoid all that. Then there's ruptured angina a bit about the omega-3 and 6 as you heard him mention, okay? So f essential fatty acids, EFAs, break it down. That's why everybody's taking fish oil, do you hear me? Okay, so you need good fats. Fats are not the enemy. You need to, I tell people, be remember I'm a plant-based person. I eat avocados every day. I'm doing some coconut oil, you know, things like that. The reason being that every part of your body, just like your car, right, if you don't have your joints um, oiled and, uh, what do you call it, lubed in the car, you're going to have problems. Let's keep listening. Aneurysms where you have a bleeding type of stroke or maybe a ruptured coronary artery aneurysm or a aneurysm of the aorta pulmonary artery or iliac arteries, you can bleed to death in seconds like you've been stabbed or shot through those arteries. And this all occurs as a result of a copper deficiency. You can wind up, uh, for instance, with a potassium deficiency and have arrhythmias and palpitations where you feel like your heart's jumping out of your chest. You can even drink too much water, dirt, and wind up diluting the sodium and potassium in your body and wind up with what's called hyponutremia and hypokolemia. And uh, this can kill you because your heart will stop if you drink too much water. And so it takes a little bit of education on each person's part to protect their heart and avoid all these unnecessary deaths. 99.9% .9 of all heart attacks, 99% of all strokes, and 99% of all cardiovascular disease is totally avoidable, totally avoidable by proper supplementation. I bet your doctor didn't tell you that, huh? Totally avoidable, 99% and more of these issues are avoidable, right? So it's just like the mechanic, a woman brings, or I shouldn't say a woman, somebody brings a car into the shop. The engine is blown. They say, did you see the light on the dashboard saying that something was up with the engine? Did you check the oil? Uh, no, no, no. We don't have to go through that. A lot of suffering, agony, debt caused in families, 
all of that's avoidable if we keep the body nutritionally optimized, right? Remember, I'm a nutritional missionary, right? I'm on a mission to help make sure people understand that we can totally prevent and even reverse a lot of these issues, but we want to prevent them in the first place, right? But we have to educate ourselves. We have to become our own doctor, okay? Let's go back. And avoiding free radical consumption, the biggest source of the free radicals, of course, is through fried foods and margins and cooking oils and burnt meats. So let me make it uh, pretty clear to everyone. You're talking about heart disease and the prevention of heart disease and possibly even the reversal of heart disease yes. by eliminating free radicals from the diet. That is correct. And I want to throw one more thing in here, Dirk. Uh, I didn't mention it, but cardiomyopathy heart disease is a very important heart disease. Uh, sometimes you survive, but then they have to put in a pacemaker or put you in all kinds of drugs to control the rhythm of the heart. Many times you die suddenly from a cardiomyopathy heart attack, and this certainly afflicts a lot of athletes. 75,000 to 100,000 young athletes die every year under the... Did you hear that number? We didn't say two or three. We didn't say a, f a hundred. We didn't, he didn't say a few hundred. He said tens of thousands of people fall over dead, athletes even, and you've seen it happen. You're about the high school star, the pro professional athletes. Flo Joe, did you just say Flo Joe? Flo Joe, this is what happened to Flo Joe, right? People don't realize that, again, we're creating these issues and we'll have big problems if we don't nourish the body so that we can make sure we're not on the cusp of, of something sudden like this happening because we haven't nourished these organs. Let's keep going. The age of 35, well, they're exercising. And um, one of the most common causes of sudden death in young athletes is cardiomyopathy heart attack. It's very common throughout the African-American community and it's caused by a high intake of, again, fried foods and vegetable oils burnt meats, common sources of free radicals, and a deficiency of the trace mineral called selenium. And uh, these are things that you have to pay attention to. Uh, you cannot guarantee you're gonna get them out of your food. And as a result, if you don't consciously supplement with them, every morning when you wake up, you're putting yourself at risk. You're kind of throwing the dice every morning. Am I gonna die from a cardiomyopathy heart attack? Am I gonna die of a stroke? Am I gonna die of a ruptured aneurysm? If you're not consciously supplementing, you're at risk for those things every morning when you wake up. So the traditional southern diet of the fried chicken and the uh, sausage biscuit in the morning and those kinds of things are very bad for us in general. Absolutely. And Dirk, here's a statistic that was actually put out in 1997 by the Harvard School of Public Health. It was a big, big article, color article. They went county by county in the United States. The people in the southeastern United States running from, say, um, Washington, D.C., down to eastern Texas, everything southeast of that line, have a lifespan that's 20 years shorter than the people in the upper Midwest in the United States. It's not genetic, has nothing to do with being African-American, but the people in the upper Midwestern part of the United States eat most of their food stewed, roasted, boiled, and poached, whereas people southeast of that line between Washington, D.C. and east Texas primarily eat fried foods, fried chicken, fried fish, fried tomatoes, fried okra, fried hush puppies, fried potatoes, fried rice, fried water, mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything is fried. It's kind of a cultural thing. And this is why their lifespan is 20 years shorter. Below this line is known among... Did you hear that? Is your lifespan worth some fried food? Okay, so we have to understand that if you're going to eat meat, and this is not just about meat eaters, because the vegans or vegetarians who are out there and all they're eating are french fries and fried battered cauliflower, on and on, it's just as destructive to the body because, again, you're causing these trans fatty acids to be formed, frying, high heating that oil, and frying that food. Yes, there are some additional uh, toxins that are created by high frying that meet the flesh, but even, for example, with frying potatoes, there are some toxins that you create when you fry white potatoes. Don't believe me? Look it up, okay? So what we're learning about today is the fact that there are some things that you can eat 
But if you eat them in such a way, say all fried, fried, fried all the time, that it causes damage in the body. Again, this is not what your doctor may even understand, so therefore, they're not going to tell you. They're going to say, well, the tests say you've got damage here, so I'm going to suggest this medication. You've got damage here, I'm going to suggest this surgery. You can't unsurgery a surgery. So what we want to do is tell you, give yourself 90 days. Get on a better eating regimen. Make sure that you're taking the right kinds of supplements so that you can remineralize your body. Make sure that it is given what it needs because guess what? It will heal itself. If you give it the right thing and the right amount of time and the right quantity, your body can heal itself. So I want to thank you to today so much for joining me. Watch this over and over and over so that you can grasp all the information, understand the implications of eating certain foods, understand the implication of not supplementing, okay? We don't come from a culture of understanding it's necessary to supplement what we eat, but we must. The food no longer has the nutrients in it that your great-great-grandmother who lived down south and lived to 110 and ate her pork chops and smoked her cigarette, et cetera, et cetera. It's a different world. The air up here, especially in places like LA, is very polluted. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of noise. The food is not nutritious. The water has been uh, adulterated. And we have to help our body in giving it the right defenses because the food it, by itself no longer has everything we need. So we want to thank our sponsor, All in One Press Kit. I want to highly suggest that you go to my website, rawvegansoulfood.com, rawvegansoulfood.com. You'll see a phenomenal press kit. You'll see videos there. You'll see a gateway to all my social media, and that's all because of all-in-one press kit. And you'll also find out more information about the supplements that Dr. Wallach is talking about. I tell you, I have been feeling so much better. I have improved so many areas in my life since I've been taking my longevity. I love it. And I plan to totally avoid having to take the medications, surgeries. I'm almost 60, and I'm not on any medications. When I want to get up and go roller skating or bike riding or jogging or whatever, I can do that. And I want you to be able to do that. And if you're 100 years old, you should still be able to do that. Go to Raw Vegan Soul Food, Sister Modupe's Raw Vegan Soul Food Facebook page. And today, I'm going to put up some pictures of people 100 years old. I saw a woman doing push-ups. I saw a woman who was my age doing phenomenal yoga moves. And people who swim, run having great times with their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. It's not, age is just a number, but it depends on how well you take care of yourself. We've got 20-year-olds who already have heart disease because they've been eating so poorly during their short lifespans. Okay, so take heed, live that wonderful, strong, beautiful life, I'll see you next time. Sister Modupoy, Sister Modupoy's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show. Thank you so much.